In this video, we will discuss the well-posedness of PDEs. Or actually, PDEs plus a set of conditions. Uh, the situation already occurred in dimension one with uh, ODEs, where we had the ODE plus the initial condition, and that was called the initial value problem. That's what we did in chapter one. Now, in a case of a PDE, so higher dimensions, uh, we're going to have initial condition and boundary conditions. Actually, we're going to have initial conditions if uh, the problem depends on time. In this case, we will be interested in the value at time t equals zero, or t times equals t naught. But we want to have the value of the system, the state of the system, at some point, and then we will, the, the PDE will actually uh, model the evolution of the system, but somehow we need to know where we start. We also have the boundary condition, which is an equation that will be satisfied on the boundary, possibly the value of the uh, unknown on the boundary. So it's pretty clear what we have for initial condition. Basically, the, the, the value of the uh, unknown at t equals zero. I just would like to, to explain a little bit more what we have for boundary conditions. So let's consider a regular open set omega included in Rd, which is of class C1. And let us consider a differential operator A and the PDE AU equals F, where F is the data and U is the unknown. Then, by definition, uh, the boundary condition is an equation that you must satisfy on the boundary or, or part of the boundary. Uh, you can have the Dirichlet boundary condition, which is probably a very simple boundary condition, very simple equation to satisfy. It's u equals g on the boundary or part of the boundary for a given g. So that's you prescribe the value of u on the boundary. And possibly the value you prescribe is zero. In this case, we have what we call a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. Let me give you an example. Uh, basically, minus Laplace u equals f, uh, and you prescribed u to be equal to zero on the boundary. That is an elliptic PDE with homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition. Uh, it can represent many things. Uh, for instance, if you, are in if you are in mechanics, then the boundary condition u equals zero, u equals g, g means that you are, uh, you are basically attaching um, your, your, your whatever you're modeling uh, on the boundary. So, so it's really an attachment condition. You prescribe the value. So if it's displacement, displacement is equal to zero, you know what is displacement on the boundary. That, that's an example. Um, you can also have here a parabolic PDE, and then you can see that we're going to have both an initial condition and the boundary condition. So here is what is the, the heat equation that we will actually uh, describe in uh, section 3.1 of this chapter. Uh, so it's time derivative of u minus Laplace operator equals f, and I can already tell you that f will be the source of heat uh, and u is the temperature. Okay, uh, and so you're basically trying to figure out what is going to be the temperature in the room. So, uh, obviously, uh, if you have the Dirichlet boundary condition, it means that you impose, you prescribe the temperature on uh, the boundary of your room, and you are interested in also knowing what is the temperature when you start the experiment, when you start observing. Obviously, if you start with a room which is really cold, it's going to be different as if you start with a room which is very hot. So it make, makes perfectly good sense. That will be a parabolic PDE with homogeneous directly boundary condition and a given initial condition. Now, uh, I can just rewrite this way. It's uh, just easier uh, by just writing Tx equals zero and then actually writing the sets this way. All right. Um, we can also have Neumann boundary conditions, and that means that we have the normal derivative of u, which is equal to g on the boundary. And homogeneous Neumann boundary condition means that, that g is equal to zero. Here is an example, uh, minus Laplace u equals uh, f, and du over dn equals zero. Well, say for instance that the, 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 the you know, the, basically we're not at equilibrium in terms of heat, 
uh, and then what you are looking at is well obviously you still have a source in your in your room uh, but instead of prescribing a value of uh, your, your 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 temperature on the binary what you're actually saying is what if the flux of, of heat going out or going uh, or not going out I mean here is zero so obviously you're saying okay well it's a very very good um, you know it's a very good very good very good house here that you have uh, but in any case uh, what, what we're doing here is um, basically talking about uh, another type of boundary condition so we have different types of boundary conditions uh, we can also mix the boundary conditions and let me now tell you what is uh, well posedness so if it's something that will be discussed in dimension one for ODEs. Let me tell you what it is in the setting of PDEs. Then E and F are two spaces. F is small f is in capital F, that will be the data. And A is your uh, differential operator coming from E to F. And what we are doing is we are looking for solutions in E. So to, 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 to the equation AU equals F, which is the PDE. Okay, and you have you obviously have uh, conditions as well. So uh, boundary conditions, central condition, you name it. Okay, so the PDE uh, will be well posed in the sense of Adamor if three things occur. Number one, the solution exists. Number two, the solution is unique. Number three, the solution U changes continuously with respect to F. If that is the case then the PDE, uh, with its conditions, will be called well-posed in the sense of Adamo. And you know uh, already about well-posedness because we talked about it in dimension one when we have ODE. It's basically the same uh, definition extended to PDEs. And whenever uh, the PDE is not well-posed, then it will be called ill-posed.